Hello everyone, how are you? Fine, thank you. Let's get this underway. So we got one more thing to do before we can uh, put Bloodstained to rest for the, at least for the foreseeable future until they come up with all the DLC and everything. And that is to defeat OD on hard mode. So we've gotten to the point of the game where, yeah, we're in the post game. Uh, we can do the fight if we want to, but it's going to take me, like, a billion tries with the strength we've got right now. So, where's my game? There's my game. Uh, so, I guess those are kind of our two options. I can either just retry, retry this fight over and over again for the next two hours, or I can go do some grinding, collecting, exploring, etc. for the next couple hours. And, uh... Yeah. Have better... and then, and then try... and then re keep on retrying the fight for two hours after that, because it's still not going to be enough. Uh, first up... I think I actually do want to try the OD fight again right now, just to kind of get a sense of where we're at, and just how close we can get with, with what we have already. And I think that'll also give me an idea of what we need to uh, make this easier on ourselves. Uh, you know that diamond is handy and I kind of don't want to lose it. Eh, whatever. Plenty more diamonds where that came from. So, this is our combat set. We will double check. That we have every advantage at hand. Yeah, this is pretty much all the best stuff we have access to. Uh, do I want the Risk Ring? I am gonna die against this guy in like three hits anyways. Uh, we'll just keep it like this for now. I'm also gonna want... Uh, dimension shift for this one because there's he has, he's got one attack that I have no idea how to dodge without dimension shift also even though he's a vampire I'm pretty sure that he bleeds so we can grab blood steel although I probably want some kind of offensive ability here just to have something to use my MP on what's the best thing we got probably still the homing lightning Probably what I'll eventually want to do is, uh... Oh yeah, that's right, Homing Lightning is a directional, and that's taken up by my Dimension Shift. Maybe sure he can, once we get it, uh, ranked and graded up. Maybe a chair. What does this even do? I've never used Summon Chair before. Well then, I can't even sit down in that. Maybe it damages enemies? Okay, I am fascinated by this summon chair move. Uh, doesn't look like it does damage. Oh, you can sit on it. You just need to put it on uh, level ground. Cool. I can sit in a chair. Ah, oh, but it only, it only lasts so long. Under the weight of Miriam's fat ass. I guess you get a better chair, maybe, at higher ranks? I don't know why I bothered collecting all those treasure chests. We're gonna lose them all right away once we go do the OD fight. <laughs> So from what I've seen so far, this fight appears to be very different from the way it is on normal mode. Oh, I don't know if I can... Yeah, I figured that would happen. <laughs> Since I was in the middle of an attack animation, I couldn't cancel out and do my dimension shift. I didn't even see what that was. Oh, he threw a sword at me. How rude. I don't think we learned anything from that. We'll try it one more time. 
On normal mode, I think he has something like 10,000 HP. So he's probably got at least 20,000 right here, and we're doing... I actually don't know how much damage we're doing. Did we even land a hit that time? Oh. That's the thing, is like all of his attacks. Oh, I think they're gonna spawn right on top of me. Oh, you know what? I forgot to. Oh, that's fine. We can do it well. We're time stopped. Forgot to queue up Dimension Shift. Well, so much for that. You know what, we could probably win this fight if I just take the time to learn it. Eh, maybe not. This is the one part that I really need to learn. Hey, we actually got it that time. Just need to be, like, ready and in position for it before he actually whips it out. Did not see what that was. Did I get hit by the flame pillar from all the way up there? Anyways, honestly, I think more defense is going to be the main thing we need for this fight. That and probably some healing items. Is there any food we can get? Actually, yeah, more food equals more HP. Also, levels would help us out here, too. Uh, I can totally make all this stuff, too. Oh, you know what I should do? Yeah, you know what's going to make this fight easy is if I do my uh, kind of cheesy, cheaty tactics with the guns and the infinite ammo. So what we really want to do is we want to finish up uh, this food side quest here, which means I need to go out there and find that spaghetti recipe that I missed the first time around. Wherever the hell that is. Um, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? I have no idea. Well, I guess we'll start with our unfilled map squares. Try to get the map coverage to 100%. What area is this, even? I don't have a teleporter up there. Oh, that's gonna be some underwater stuff. Yeah, there may very well be some hidden shit over there. Maybe even a teleporter that I missed, because, man, that's a long way to... It's a long walk from the nearest teleporter to get up there. Uh, so, yeah, maxing out my resistances, that's the other thing that's going to be really good for this fight. The actual damage reduction that you get from maxed resistance is actually not great. And when I say max resistance, I mean the resist whatever damage shards. But yeah, the thing that makes that good is the chance to potentially completely nullify the damage. Which means that we're basically going to be want to be farming every type of elemental.
I don't know who came up the, with the idea that spikes and traps in video games, and Metro Metroidvanias in particular, should do like a fixed percentage of your HP and damage, but I hate it. I hated it in La Mulana too, and I hate it here. Like, fuck, I don't know if I can get through here. Okay, barely made it. I mean, it was, it was bad enough on normal mode, but yeah, I can't believe that they actually double... So I think it's what, it's, spikes take away probably like an eighth of your HP on normal mode? And I guess on hard mode, it's a quarter. Something like that. Oh, I kind of want to farm this horse, too. I think I need one water horse main to be able to max out my underwater movement speed. Also, he drops that spear, which sells for a good amount of money. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I guess I've got way more luck this time around than the last time I was in this area. So yeah, farming's gonna go way faster than it did last time we were here. Yeah, I, I didn't explore all of this underwater bullshit. chests here. Um, so how, what does that do for our map percentage? Not a hell of a lot. Yeah, I'm running out of map squares to fill in here. Oh, right. Yeah, we still got to do... Uh, Carpenter's room and whatever the other room was. So there were no teleporters down here. Yeah, this is like the longest stretch of castle right here in the middle where it's just any way you want to get here. There's no good teleporter for it. Anyways, I guess the closest teleporter to us now is the one up in the gardens. Yeah, I guess that's one other way we can get past the OD fight is just get tons of levels. Also, just make a quick crack at the zombie Simon fight right here, I guess. I'll even do it with my luck gear equipped, just to give, a, give ourselves a higher chance at that soul. So yeah, you can refight this guy. It's just the boss door doesn't close and the music doesn't play. He's essentially a regular enemy now.
Thankfully, he's not too smart. Oh, we got an Im we got his imbrued skull too. I don't even know what we can do with that. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste too much time trying to farm him, farm his shard. You know what? These pigs are worth farming too because they give you uh, pork cutlet, I think, which is actually a requirement for. Uh, enhancing certain shards. For now, though, we'll actually do the first thing that I said and do this carpenter's room. I've taken so, so much stupid damage now that I'm not really confident that I can take on the Carpenter, but I'm gonna do it anyways, because it's a pretty simple fight. It's not easy necessarily, but it's simple. Yeah, I don't really have a good save point. I'm just gonna go for it. Double fuck. Uh, I don't have any healing at all, do I? Jesus. Yeah, he's got good aim with those cleavers there. Um, shit, we lost. I don't know exactly what, but I don't think I've saved in a while. Okay, yeah, we just gotta climb back up here. I'm actually not going to bother with the Simon fight this time around. Shit, I think I'm getting, getting uh, better drops this time around. Actually, let's go do Millionaire's Key first, since there's a save point right near here. This one could take a while, or it could just finish immediately. This is a literal slot machine. Although I think it might be impacted by your, your luck, so maybe this won't take too long. so close. Oh, he's taking my money. Jerk. I don't know what this is. Ooh, money. Whoa, tons of money.
cherry. I don't think I've ever gotten this one before. Oh, it's just a stupid bunny girl. Oh, he just brings out another one. Yeah, 777 seven, seven kills him. And we got the shard, first try. And we got thousands of dollars. I forget what the reward was for that, but we'll just go back and get that now. And I think that's our last uh, kill quest. Oh yeah, I forget what the other girl wanted to. Oh, that's right, she wants Orichalcum, which I still have no idea where to get. Hmm. Awesome. We have killed all of the murderers dead. Or have we? Do I have to do something else? Why do I... The list still shows up, but she's got no more quests for me. All of the other N NPC quest givers have, like, some special dialogue for when you, uh, fulfill all their requests. Yeah, this is all the Vengeance quests done. Oh wow, we still got a lot of, a uh, lot of food to make. Oh, also, I never talked to this guy. I think he has one final reward. Cool. Don't even know what that does, but I don't think it's useful. Status inflictions increase your power. Okay, here's one thing I can do. Okay, before we do anything else, though, I'm gonna finish up the carpenter up here. But what I think I want to do now is just go all out to finish the NPC side quests. So we're gonna go hunting for Aura Chalcum, and we're gonna go looking for a spaghetti recipe. It's that wind cyclone that he used. That's actually a really cool looking attack. I might want to invest in that one a little bit. Ooh, also, I might want to jack up my shuriken shard, too. So the trick I've found here is you pretty much always want to be behind him. Also, the buzzsaw doesn't hurt you at all. Where things get really tricky is once he summons this demon lord. There we go. I knew that he didn't have that much HP. He's got a shard, but I don't know that I want to farm it necessarily. Also, yeah, we didn't even get like a treasure chest or anything out of that. That, f that fight is good for nothing other than whatever goodies you can farm off of it.
Oh, also my eyeball got disabled again. Holy shit, this thing's back already. So I'm pretty sure that Orichalcum is dropped in one of the late game areas, so I think we're just going to work our way backwards. Oh, also, apparently I'm missing an enemy? Oh, right, the thing on the train. I don't think I ever, uh, ever showed him off, did I? Okay, so we have his drop. We don't have any drops from this guy, so I think I'm going to farm that uh, the big axe guy, see what he has for us. I think I know just the place for it, too. Oh, whoops. Uh... Huh, this is a problem. Um, so I guess we can go back to the library and unequip this book, which is a bit of a shame, because it's a good book. Gives us some good stats and everything, but... Yeah, that's annoying. I guess we just really can't make use of this book until we, uh, kill OD. I guess one thing I could do maybe is just farm everywhere else where there might be Orichalcum, and then just, uh, yeah, do the ice area last. Okay, so it's supposedly if I just unequip this, he won't show up anymore. Also, yeah, we'll go double luck tomes. Man, I've killed so many of those axe armors so far, too. I'm surprised he hasn't dropped anything. Yeah, I think this is the one we want to go for. Eh, maybe not. Too much other shit going on in that room. There we go, this is the one. Yeah, I really do have to dodge his axe throw there. Do I have a better weapon for this? Maybe he has a weakness. Weak to piercing and lightning. I have both of those things. 
Oh, no, I don't, because I traded in my Lightning Spear for a Holy Spear. Which I think he also is weak against, so sure, why not? That doesn't seem any faster. Hey there, creator of Bloodstained. Yep, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Thank you very much. Oh shit, there it is! That's exactly what we were looking for. Now, I probably want more than one of those, so I can not just turn it into the NPC, but also make stuff with them. Only it took quite a long time to just get the one. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, let's get out of here uh, before we, yeah, lose all of our hard-won progress. I don't think that the elemental can one-shot us from 167. Good stuff. Uh, like, so it certainly takes a long time if you want to, like, explore it, to experience it to the fullest. You got the three difficulty settings. I mean, hell yeah, if you want it to take a long time, just play it on Nightmare. Oh my god. Yeah, I only got the one of these. Hey, we got Fornius Manure. Oh god, she still wants more stuff. Oh, Ancient Tiara. This is, Ancient Tiara is way easier to get than friggin' Orichalcum. I think I have one of those already. Okay, I don't, but I'm pretty sure I can craft it quite easily. Oh, maybe not. Shit, where do we go to get gold? Gold doesn't drop from anything, thankfully. Uh, we can get it from... Do I have any antimatter? No, not antimatter. Yeah, antimatter? Yeah, you can craft gold, I'm pretty sure, from antimatter and something else. Looks like I don't have any antimatter, though. Oh, wait, yes, I do. Oh, dark matter, that's it. Yeah, I don't have any. I mean, I've got all the ingredients for this, so I might as well make it. So you can totally eat the dark matter. It doesn't, it doesn't show as giving you any stats, so I don't know if it actually does anything. But I know that it's a crafting material for a bunch of different things. Oh, never mind. Man, okay, that takes a lot more dark matter than I thought. <laughs> 50 mercury and 10 dark matter for one thing of gold, huh? Uh, so we're going to find gold in treasure chests somewhere, but I forget which area has it. Uh, this chick is way behind on the plot here. Samurai Man is dead. Hmm... So we're kind of stuck now. I'm gonna eat the dark matter. 
maybe it does something. Like, hidden. Oh, it said I resisted whatever it did. I think it just poisons you. So this gold breastplate right here is the ticket. I showed this off on a previous stream, but if I can get two pieces of gold, I can craft the gold breastplate and then I can buy and disassemble as many gold breastplates as I want to uh, effectively buy my own gold. But we need to get some gold first and I don't know how to do that. Well, let's just go wandering around. Uh, Picking up shit from all the treasure chests. Actually, no. We'll do something productive. In fact, we'll we'll do both things at the same time. I want to basically wander around the castle, picking up all of the blue treasure chests all over the place, and I want to be rubbing out my detective eye against every wall. Looking for that recipe book that I missed. Okay, they're not going to give us gold in the entrance hallway, I'm pretty sure, so we'll skip up to the chapel. Ah, uh, there's no way up to the chapel from here. You'd think there would be some way to upgrade your crafting materials, like 10 silver makes a platinum and 10 platinum makes a gold or something like that. Oh, hey. Man, there's always that moment of excitement when you pop open a breakable wall, and then half the time it's just like a ammo upgrade or something worthless. about the dash ability is that it counts as an attack, so if you just dash into a breakable wall, it'll break itself for you. I never did find anything to do in this room here with the creepy eyeball portrait. Oh hey, there's a... Uh, we got unfilled map squares here. I think this is just the boss chamber. Yeah.
Uh, what's over here? Oh, you know what? This this area's got all kinds of fancy golden shit all over it. I bet you we can find some gold in here. Also, I remember there being a lot of hidden walls in this area. Or breakable walls, so maybe we should check this out a little bit more closely. idea how to just farm gold out of the castle. Every time I've needed it in the past, I've just been, oh, cool, I've got some gold that I just happened to pick up somewhere along the way, but I've never, never paid attention to where the gold is actually located. I'll sit on my golden throne here and ponder where the gold might be while I go grab some coffee. We could also just go do the 8-bit nightmare again just because we're here and it's there. Ooh, Hellhorse uh, Main. I think we wanted that for something. Nah, I'm not gonna waste the time. Is this a hidden area here or some weird fucking glitch? Because that is a solid wall that we're walking through. I think that's just some weird glitch. I don't think you're gonna you're supposed to be able to walk through that. something. What have we got? Beautiful. We're gonna have so much MP that we don't really have anything any need for right now because we're killing everything in one hit anyways. Okay, we're getting platinum from this area, so it stands to reason that gold would come from whatever whatever area was after this. Also, this is an excellent room to farm uh, sword familiar shards, if that's what we're into. Doesn't seem to want to drop his shard, though. There we go. Problem is, we haven't been leveling up the sword familiar, so even if I do get him to grade 9, he's still gonna be not very good. Oh, hey, that's a bit faster. Explosion! 
trying to set it up so I can get... There we go. Let's double jump the, up there into the middle of the room. Kill them all. Don't really care if I miss some of the drops. At this point, we got more than enough. This is getting a bit tedious. Ah, we're out of, uh, out of mana. That's fine. That's enough short sword shards for one day. Oh. What is it this time? Ammo capacity? It literally is. Ammo capacity. Awesome. And this is where we came from in the first place. I think I'll take the teleporter out of here to... Um... Maybe let's just farm all the enemies. No, I want to get the blue treasure chest. Let's go to the Den of Behemoths and see what they got there. Oh, but we can't teleport straight to the Den of Behemoths. Ah, 99.8 map coverage. What are we missing? No idea. It's not even going to be helpful to uh, pull up a walkthrough on game uh, or anything, or, or like a comparison completed map. Just because there's so much map in this game. Be like doing a spot the differences thing between this and a completed map. It would just take forever to actually notice what's missing. Yeah, I think we'll go do Den of Behemoths, see what they got there. Man, they got demons and ice elementals up in here, too. I can farm every enemy in the game without having to pass through OD's boss chamber, except for that axe guy. I think it might be nothing but money in this area for treasure chests. Yeah. I got more money than I even need at this point.
so we don't really need to be here unless one of these giant enemies has a drop that we want. Ooh, that Lion Lord's main, actually. I think I need to get, like, 12 of those to max out all the shards I want. Oh, also, this guy actually has a different shard than the other chariot. So that's basically it. We want to farm the green lion man here, except I don't know. I don't know what's a good room to do that. So yeah, the lion men we've seen so far are out in the middle of the big rooms with the big black dragons. Maybe there are, oops, maybe there will be one this way. Also, I appear to be lost. Oh, we gotta take, like, a winding... Man, why couldn't they give you a passageway up through here? Or maybe there is one. Nope. Okay, I guess we're taking the long way around. Feels like we're spending our time non-productively right now. I don't know what we can do that's going to be helpful, though. I need I need gold. Gold is our stopping, is our one sticking point right now, and I don't know where to get it. It wasn't in the Oriental Sorcery Lab either. There was nothing but uh, nothing but soy sauce in the chests there. Actually, I wonder if there's, like, a breakable floor under here or something. Nope. Just a stupid weed. the one frickin' green lion man in the whole game? Because I don't think we've seen him anywhere else. Or we've seen maybe two of them. Or you know what, I think there might have been one up in this part of the level that wasn't here on normal mode. Ooh, we got diamonds.
Now it's the wolf man. Oh, there's nothing here that we really want. Other than a green lion guy that we can't really farm effectively at all. Uh, where else do we want to go? Inferno Cave, maybe? Yeah, I guess we'll go backwards from Inferno Cave. So yeah, we did Oriental Lab, we did Den of Behemoths. What would be the next thing back from the Inferno Cave? I guess it would be the Sand Cave. Hey, this might be the thing that we want, or one of the things. Nope. That was almost exciting for a second. It's like, ooh, an unopened treasure chest. Could be all manner of things that we really, really need right now. And it's a flame scarf. That, actually, we haven't had a new scarf in a while. That could be an improvement. Oh, heck yeah. Awesome, Flame Scarf, more attack power. Uh, I'm about to die here. Ah, uh, shoot, where's the nearest save point? Hey there, Vessel. Good to see ya. Just in time to catch some, uh, yeah. Mindless wandering through Castle Bloodstained yet again. We're digging for gold. I have no idea where to find gold in this game. I know where... I know how to make gold once we find a couple pieces of gold, but I have no idea where we go to actually get the first bit of gold that we need. Also, I'm missing the spaghetti recipe, so that's two things we're looking for. So yeah, this is the this is just like the old, the good old fun parts of 
playing through a Metroidvania the first time, where you just scour every inch of the castle looking for breakable walls. I have not... have not killed OD yet. Not even close. I tried him a couple times, which is how I decided that we need to go farm for shit before we try OD. Where does this door even lead? Oh, there was a treasure chest up here that I apparently got. Ooh, but we missed this. What do we got? Hey, that's it. Supreme dish. That's the thing I was looking for. We can, we can make spaghetti now and finish off the uh, old lady's spaghetti quest. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully I didn't miss more than one uh, recipe book. Yeah, the tome run is, like, yeah, kind of ridiculous. It almost feels like cheating when you get a winning run on an overpowered class like that, but we'll see if it ends up being winning. We've still got, you know, half of the game to go. Well, I can't make any of these supreme dishes, which is not a good sign. Okay, am I crazy? Did I did I not just pick up a book that said Supreme Dish? Ooh, fruit juice. Uh, we can make that. Okay, let's buy all the ingredients first. Oh wow, we're yeah, we got no ingredients right now. Holy shit, I got a lot of this rennet. Okay, so we can make all the garbage now. Like, am I just crazy? Have I been overlooking spaghetti among all the dishes I've cooked already? Because I've cooked it already? Okay, fruit juice. That's like the first good thing we've been able to get in forever. Even more MP regen. We're up to 8 MP per second. Oh, I've never made tonkotsu broth. What do I need for that? Plume pork? I could swear that I had that. Oh well, it's not it's not hard to find at the very least. So I've, no I've noticed we've got a few new dishes, but none of them are useful at all. Christ, it's the worst case scenario. We found a recipe book, but it's not the one we need. There's another one out there somewhere that I just completely missed, hidden inside some other random breakable wall. Christ. Okay, let's just make all of the broth, because I don't think I've made these before.
none of that stuff is any good. Man, this is the, this is the yeah, like I said, just like playing through a Metroidvania for the first time, where we're just wandering around looking for stuff, having no idea where anything is. Crazy, right? Saucy strands? That's gotta be spaghetti and meatballs right there. Whatever, I guess we'll just keep looking. Oh, also, what did this lady want again? A complete... Right, that's why we're looking for the gold. So we're looking for the gold so that we can make this helmet that the uh, graveyard lady wants. And I think that'll get us... That'll get us the ring that makes the souls... Uh, drop at a higher rate. Uh, is the recipe in the Dragon Tower? You know, I thought it was something like that because uh, I had the same problem on my first playthrough. I got stuck on the same place where I uh, couldn't make the pasta dish and I was pretty sure that I found it somewhere in the Dragon Tower. But I was here last stream and I didn't find it anywhere. Oh, well, shit. This is it, isn't it? Nope. But this proves that there's breakable walls around here that I missed the first time around. Like, it could very well be somewhere in this mess of a room. It's impossible to find stuff in this section, though, just because of the crazy way the map wraps around. Like, I can't tell what's been explored here and what hasn't, because everything's filled in because of the wraparound effect. Maybe it was on the right-hand side of the, uh, like, an inverting... Ooh, maybe that's it up there. No, that's a blue treasure chest. But we'll take it anyways in case there's gold. On the outside of the first tower, so that's where we are right now. Oh, that's it right there. That's that treasure chest I was going on and on about every time we came to this area. It's like, wasn't there that one up on the platform? Because, yeah, you don't even need invert. I think you just need double jump. Because, yeah, you can... Yeah, as long as the Dulla hands don't fuck it up for you. Which they just did. But, yeah, you can kick off that first candle, then kick off this one. And double jump up here, and there's our pasta dishes. Fuck's sake. Every time we've backtracked through this area, I've looked for that treasure chest. Because I remembered that I missed it the first time. And I could never find it. It was just there out in the open. Cool, so that gets us our spaghetti. Assuming I even have the ingredients for it. We're not even close to finishing off the cooking side quests either. We have like, I think six or seven of them to go after this. Thankfully I've made almost everything already, so a lot of this stuff we'll be able to just buy. What? Or right, I actually have to go make the spaghetti. Yeah, so what do you Classic spaghetti. There we go. Yeah, I want some of that uh, XP percentage up. Really, I should have been focusing on those much earlier in the game. What? 
Something refreshing. Oh, it's just juice. Actually, you know what? If we're lucky, she'll... Uh... Okay, it looks like that's lemonade. If we're lucky, she'll give us something with gold in it as a reward. So yeah, we should keep... We should forget the gold... The hunt for gold and just keep doing cooking side quests. to produce a crispy outside. Ooh, I don't think I've made that one yet. I think I need to farm the flying pigs to do that one. Oh no. Yeah, pork cutlet? Crispy on the outside? Yeah, I've made that already. Is it worth my while to buy this discount card? I'm not even sure that it is. It's a very small discount that you get, like 10%. I don't even know if it saves me money in the long run. Like, I basically need to buy another 100,000 worth of stuff to get my money's worth out of this, and I don't need if I don't know if I'm going to be doing that much more shopping on this playthrough. I bought it on my other save file, and I felt ripped off afterwards. I think that's Flan? Oh no, that's, uh, is that an omelette of some kind? I'll check and see if I've made one already. Doesn't look like I've made one yet. I forget the description we were looking for. Something, something fluffy? Nope. Oh, egg souffle. Apparently I have made it. Oh no, I've eaten it. That doesn't necessarily mean that I've made it. Yeah, it could have dropped, or we could have gotten it from a treasure chest. Oops. Well, I guess we gotta make the souffle now. Oh, we just need some butter. Oh yeah, I decided on, uh, yeah, I figured out what anime game I'm going to play for the rest of the day after we're done with, uh, done with this game here. Not going to reveal it just yet, but I have decided. It's something I actually bought here on stream at someone's suggestion a while back. Oops. Uh, we want a miracle. 
Oh, that's just a sponge cake. I might actually have some of that right now. Yeah, sponge cake. What? Oh, it's like sponge cake with some garbage on top of it. Pretty sure I've made all the cakes, so... Should be in here somewhere. Yeah, it's a chiffin cake. Man, none of this stuff looks like it's made of gold, though. That sounds vaguely creepy. <laughs> Bring me crispy skin! Uh, I don't think I've made that one. Oh, there it is, yeah. Chicken saute. Ooh, shit. Do I have sea urchin? Oh, that doesn't look familiar. It's one of those, like, soups. Yeah, one of the ramen dishes. I think every single time I've gone back here and said, Oh, I haven't made that thing yet. I've totally made the thing. Oh, there it is. Uni rice bowl. I, once again, I may not have crafted it. No, that, that's why you got to distinguish. The, the currency is... Oh, no, it is called gold. It calls it that right there on the screen. I've just been abbreviating it as G. But yes, I need the item gold. Um, For the weekend, yeah. Just because I'm in the mood. Like, I've got... Since i got my whole, like, next couple days completely wide open, I'm in the mood to just, like, sit around like a piece of shit and watch a bunch of crappy, stupid anime. But then I would feel guilty for, you know, not streaming and doing all that instead. So I was trying to some find some way to incorporate watching shitty, stupid anime and streaming into the same activity. So I decided we would play some shitty, stupid anime game. I think you might it might be one that you're interested in. Now I forget what we're looking for. Ah, shit. Yeah, I think it's another one of those things that I... that dropped, but I did not cook. Shoot. So now I need to go farming for sea urchins. Oh, you know what? Uh... That reminds me, since we're going back underwater, I believe I got my water horse main. Ooh, I've also got my lion lord's whoop, my lion lord's main now too. Oh, for fuck's sake, you still need water horse mains even for the next tier. Also, this drain is a good one to max out, so I won't be able to do it until we get the more Sinister Fangs, though. I got a fuck ton of Sapphires, so yeah, let's just do this. The resist shards are so easy to max out. This fire will be really good for the OD fight, too. Um, I forget what it is. Yeah, there's a shard that lets you just passively recover hit points over time. I forget which one it is. I think Drain is better, though. 
Because, yeah, Drain is the one that lets you uh, recover HP by hitting enemies. Also, I need to get that Augment Lock at some point. Actually, it might not be a passive shard. It might be one of the blue shards. Whatever. If it is, I don't have it. Maybe it's both, because I'm pretty sure there is a blue shard where you hold down the button and it slowly, very, very slowly recovers your hit points. Oh yeah, I haven't checked out the sorcery lab. Oh, okay, so yeah, I've got to craft it, that's right. the urchins at. Pretty sure they weren't over this way. Unless they were. No, that's the way to the sorcery lab. Oh, there's one water horse main. No, I am not farming nine of those things. It's not happening. But, you know, while we're here, we might as well kill these guys along the way. I don't know about that, because the thing with OD is that he, uh, he deals so much damage that I don't think I'll be able to recover it by the time he just kills me. I think what's going to be better is maxing out my resistances. Because when you rank those up, you get that passive chance to just nullify any damage. So I, if I just get all my resistance shards maxed out... There'll just be, like, a reasonable chance that he just does zero damage when he happens to hit me. Like, we might just get lucky and not get damaged sometimes. Which is, you know, amazing when the hits are doing, like, 400 damage a pop. I mean, who am I kidding? We'll probably do both in the end. With as badly as the OD fight has been going so far, but... some more water. Where the hell are those clams at? I think this underground waterway might be the biggest area in the game. Or I guess actually Behemoth's Den is probably the biggest area in the game. Hey, we got the shovel armor. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but shovel armor is pretty fun. It's shoveling time! Yeah, as far as I can tell, I don't have any special abilities or anything. But yeah, I'm a shovel knight now. Basically the same gimmick as the axe armor in Symphony of the Night. Oh, you can actually point your shovel. That's actually pretty handy. Miriam doesn't have any weapons that can attack upwards. No diagonals, though, just straight up. Also, I can't high jump or anything. This is actually horrible. It's fun, though. It doesn't need to be, you know, good. It just needs to be fun. That was the 
kind of the gameplay philosophy behind Symphony of the Night. It doesn't matter if everything's good or balanced or whatever, it just needs to be fun. Or cool. Actually, am I going the wrong way? Can we get down to the water from here? Oh yeah, there we go. Pretty sure there's clams down here. I actually do want these treasure chests too. Because those emeralds will help me get my Thunder Resist maxed out. I don't know if OD has a lightning attack, but, you know, he might. There are clams down here, right? So many enemies dropping shit all over me. I can't handle all this. Ice and fire. I don't like the like the video game Ice and Fire. For the Nintendo? Oh, is that it? Is that my clams? No, I don't want clams, I want urchin urchins. Oh, as, as far as just generic ice and fire. They were capitalized, so I thought that you were referencing the title of something. Yeah, I know he has ice attacks, and I know he has fire attacks. Which means he probably has thunder, because, you know, why wouldn't he? I should have probably checked the bestiary to see if these guys even drop urchins. I bet you they won't. I bet you they're just clams, because clams and urchins aren't actually the same thing. Fuck. Um, okay, so where do we get the urchins? Dulla hammer? Fuck's sake. That makes no sense. Zero sense that makes. Actually, let's just. I don't even care if there's a faster teleporter in that direction. I don't want to go through those damn spikes. Where the hell do we even go to farm Della Hammers? Like, back to the wrecked ship, I think. Okay, where's the nearest teleporter? Yeah, all the way back this way. This is that same area I was complaining about before. No good teleporters to get down here. Oh yeah. The way I do it is I just uh, dimension shift through it. Because, yeah, if you max out Dimension Shift, or even just increase its rank, uh, you get a uh, longer period of invulnerability, where you just blink out of existence for a little bit. Uh, you know what? I think at this 
rate, it's probably faster to just just walk, just go on foot back to the wrecked ship. Also, I can't remember if you were here yesterday during the second Zangetsu, or no, the, yeah, second Zangetsu fight, where he has the ridiculous ceiling talisman attack that's undodgeable and kills you in one hit. I never did find a good way to dodge that one either. Eventually I found that one specific shard can block it for no good reason. I think you'd remember if you were here because I complained about that boss fight and that specific attack quite a bit because I was stuck on it for a long time. So yeah, on hard mode, Zangetsu has a new attack that's just a straight-up, undodgeable insta-kill. That he uses basically every time that you do the fight, after a certain amount of time. And it's not a time-based thing, it's just like, yeah, once he gets to a certain stage, a uh, certain number of hit points left, then... Uh, yeah, he'll do this undodgeable insta-kill. And the only way that I found to, uh avoid it is that there's one specific shard. It might even be the same one. Uh, the... Is it Silver Knight? Directed Shield. Yeah, this one here. For some reason, it can block it. Even though it's not really a projectile that he shoots at you, it's just like a... fills... Basically encircles you with like some talismans, and then you're just trapped there for like three seconds, and then you die. But for some reason, if you have this shield out, it'll block it, and you won't die. I saw it on a YouTube video, and that's the only way I've found to not get killed by that attack. Um, I think I do have the giant rat shard. I'm not sure about that. Also, hello. Yeah, I've got a giant sh rat shard already. Got it way back near the start of the game, I'm pretty sure. Oh, hey, this guy drops bronze, too. Also, apparently, I never got his shard. So the only reason I'm doing, uh lightning attack here is because it doesn't this is so cool but yeah it doesn't interrupt your running okay there's our sea urchin i think i need one more of those actually i think i need lemons for something too i don't know it just kind of seems natural right we're making fish dishes now and you always want lemon with your fish Still don't have enough MP regeneration to spam this thing as much as I want. Oh, that works. Oh, I actually decided to, uh... I didn't actually watch Saint Tail last night. I decided to, uh finish up the last few episodes of the second season of High School DxD instead. Which was a good time. It's getting kind of stupid now. But that's kind of what those types of, like, overpot like, you know, shonen type shows are about anyways, where everyone gets ludicrously overpowered. I like how they go all out with the, like, perverted stuff, too. Like, you, you, the main character is like, super-powered weapon is actually fuel fueled by his quote-unquote desire. <laughs> Which is basically, like, his pervertedness. So it's, it's like, very few anime manage to do this, where it's like they keep the comedy going during, like, the serious moments of the plot. Almost every anime that's even vaguely comedic will drop all pretense of comedy once things start ramping up for any type of big final encounter or, uh, yeah, basically things get all dramatic by the time you get to, to the end of any season of any anime, even if it's supposedly comedic. 
Um, I liked Dragon Ball as a kid, but it's way too slow-paced for my liking these days. But anyways, yeah, High School DxD, at least the second season, uh, managed to manages to kind of avoid that trope, and yeah, there's still a bunch of silly, ridiculous things happening, even in the during the super serious final battle. Um, okay, so this is going to be a dish that I have made, or that I have eaten before. Wait, I got my urchins, right? What the hell? What the hell? Oh, there it is. Uh, we're gonna have to use up soy sauce for this. Um, or, uh, sorry, Dragon. the original Dragon Ball I actually still like. Uh, I didn't get into that one a little bit later. I started with Dragon Ball Z. Dra yeah, Dragon. the original Dragon Ball is a fun little adventure show. It's kind of a different style. More of like a kid's show than a... More of the, like, Shonen-y DBZ later on. Uh, and then, and then Jer Dragon Ball GT kind of brought things back to the fun children's adventure show, and everybody hated it, because... You know, because Dragon Ball Z is a completely different thing. But yeah, I never watched Dragon Ball Super, just because I'm not really that interested in DBZ anymore. I hear it's better. Like, it sounds, from what I hear, the whole concept uh, just kind of fixes some of the problems I had with DBZ. This has got to be that uh, apple risotto. Shit, I gotta go farming apples now. This is like the... Oh, I've got apples. I don't have black pepper. That's one of those ones that you need to, uh... Doesn't drop from enemies. You can only get it from certain treasure chests. I think they... I think you can get it from the Oriental Sorcery Lab. Yeah, as if, as if Dragon Ball Z wasn't on steroids in the first place. Like, honestly, isn't that what the show is actually about? It's just, yeah, main character gets his ass kicked and then he takes steroids and wins. Repeat incessantly. No, oh, maybe I was wrong. But I guess I'll just pick up all the treasure chests here anyways while I'm here. Now the thing was, I never actually watched all of Dragon Ball Z, because they only released so many episodes. They were very, very slow about uh, translating them. I think it was a Funimation show back in the day. And they, they just show reruns constantly. Like, for the longest time, we only got, like, to the end of... Or not even to the end. They were, like, part way through the... What do they, what do they call it? The first saga. There's the Namek saga. The Saiyan saga. That's the first one. And they got, like, halfway through that, and then they ran out of material, so they just kept on airing the Saiyan saga over and over again. Then we got up to the Namek saga and reran that over and over again. I think I only watched up to, like, halfway through the Cell games. I don't think I have the patience to watch something like DBZ these days. It, like, it ran for, like, a million, a million seasons. And every season is basically the same. <laughs> Bunch of super buff animes taking steroids and beating each other up.
That's and that's the thing. I'm not really into the yeah shonen type action shows anymore. Some an, an adventure story like uh, the original Dragon Ball or G Dragon Ball GT is much more something that I'm interested in. So it looks like... What am I looking for again? I need some kind of cooking ingredient, but I forget what it was. Right, we're looking for black pepper. No idea where to get it, though. Yeah, that sounds like everything. Like, I, I know the major villains. Like, yeah, it's... The Saiyans, then Frieza, then Cell, then Boo. With, like, the minor villains before each of those, you got, uh... Oh, what are they? Oh, the guys, like, Frieza's lieutenants or whatever. I think they're mercenaries or something that he... The Ginyu Force, yeah. And then before Cell, you had the androids. That's the thing, is every season, every saga of DBZ has basically the same structure. I guess it, it, the show really is just basically it's the same story over and over and over again. And then they go to King Kai's planet to get buff all over again. Or wherever it is they go to get buff. I didn't notice. Did I get my black pepper there? Whatever, we'll just get all of the treasures. Doesn't look like there's black pepper here. Oh yeah, I never watched the Dragon Ball movies, actually. But yeah, there's a bunch of other characters that are only introduced in the films as well. It, it even goes to a more specific level than that, because that's, that's almost every anime is, yeah. Fight, there's the big bad, and then they fight them and lose, and they go and train, and then they beat him. But there's also, like, the thing where it's, like, every big villain has, like, three different transformations that they go through, and then the heroes go through, like, two or three transformations themselves to get on his level, and then the villain always has his, uh, like, force of lieutenants who they fight first, who introduce the season, or, 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 or yeah, who sort of kick things off for the season until the big bad is revealed later on. Actually, yeah, it's all gems in this tower. There's no black pepper here. I think I might have seen black pepper in the entrance hallway. Like, the formula is very specific, and every single saga follows it to a T. Um, I think... I could be wrong, but I think Cooler was in... The series, but only very briefly. Like, he shows up in one episode, and Future Trunks kills him in one punch. And I think that's all you see of Cooler in, uh, in DBZ. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different character. Because, yeah, there's Robot Frieza shows up with someone else. I thought it was King Cooler. And then Future Trunks shows up and kills them both. Or I guess it wouldn't have been a punch. I guess he would have killed them with his sword. Oh, I can even high jump and swing my sword at the same time. Without interrupting it. Uh, so where's my treasure chest at in this area? Giant, giant alien in Dragon Ball? That 
That could be everything, because basically everyone in Dragon Ball who isn't a human is an alien. Like, frickin' Goku and all of his family, other than his wife, are aliens. Like, the Saiyans are all aliens. The Namekians are all aliens. It's like basically every character... Basically every character who isn't uh, Yamcha or Krillin in DBZ is an alien. Oh, that looks like something from either the movies or GT. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't I don't know the movies at all, so I couldn't identify anything from any of them. I actually never finished watching G uh, Dragon Ball G GT. I only kind of got into it by accident. There was a There was like an anime evening basically every week on uh, I think it was Teletoon back in the day. Where they would, there was just back to back every Friday, I think it was. They would show Inuyasha, Card Captor Sakura, Dragon Ball GT, and something else that I can't remember. Oh yeah, Clone High for some reason, <laughs> uh, either before or after all of that. I mean, I used to watch all of them, so that's how I got into a lot of the anime that I watched in my adolescence. But yeah, I actually really liked GT. I can get why people didn't like it, because it was a weird, like, reversion to... It basically undid a lot of stuff that happened in Dragon Ball Z for no good reason. Just for the sake of regressing things to a state where they could do a, dragon, a story like the original Dragon Ball again. But the thing is, I wasn't super invested in the story and the plot happenings of Dragon Ball Z in the first place that much, since I never watched it all, so I don't know what happened by the end of DBZ. So I was fine for them to just reset everything and do Dragon Ball again, where they're traveling to different planets. I thought it was really fun. I, that doesn't make any sense to me, though. Like, why does it matter whether it's canon or not? Like, the canonicity of a series to the overall you know, series timeline is just a matter of, like, uh, creator fiat, basically. Like, Akira Toriyama, or whoever, could come out tomorrow and say, oh, by the way, Dragon Ball Z GT is canon, and then it would be canon. Like, there's nothing to it. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any difference whether it's canon or not. Where the hell are the treasure chests in this area? Oh, hey, there's our sword expertise. I somehow missed out on that before now. Also, these empty map squares below me here look really suspicious, but I haven't been able to find any secret rooms or anything. Must have been over this way. Like, I'm sure there was a room with two blue treasure chests. I guess that would make sense if, yeah, like there's inconsistencies with the rules of the universe. And, uh, yeah, things being inconsistent as far as, uh... Like, yeah, just the way the Dragon Balls work and stuff like that. I suppose that would make sense is if people were upset about that kind of thing. In fact, but yeah, that was the premise of the whole series, is, yeah, the reason they can't just wish Goku back into adulthood is that, oh, they use the universal Dragon Balls or whatever, so it's, yeah. Yeah, they basically had to nerf the Dragon Balls in order to make the plot work. It's like, yeah, they basically just had to arbitrarily decree that the Earth Dragon Balls don't work anymore for this specific thing you want to do. So you got to go find the Universal Dragon Balls to give us an excuse to go into space and travel to different planets. And I was fine with all that because I like 
you know, going into space and traveling to different planets. That was a fun idea for a DBZ-like adventure story. Right, it was right, yeah, right here is where all the treasure chests are. Still no black pepper, though. And if they're not going to show you what enemies drop specific crafting materials, I wish they would at least tell you what area the treasure chest is that you need to get them. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, there was even an alternate... Yeah, there was an alternate set of Dragon Balls even in Dragon Ball Z, because yeah, you had the Namek Dragon Balls. Anyways, all this talk about balls is... Uh... I don't know, has nothing to do with anything, but I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, so, black pepper. There's obviously none in the underground waterway, else I would have found it by now. Fuck, I have no idea where to go to get this stuff. Uh, okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? I don't know that it's on the train necessarily, but there was the thing I said I was gonna do on the train that I never got around to doing, so we'll just do that now. And maybe there will be black pepper there too, who knows. Also, I randomly thought of this while I was on the toilet, but, uh... 
I was trying to connect the whole Dragon Ball discussion back to video games. I've never played any type of uh, Dragon Ball video game other than like one of the Super Nintendo fighting games, but wasn't the Dragon Ball uh, one of the treasures in... Oh, hey, there's that healing skill I was talking about, yeah. Blue Shard, where you hold down the button to heal yourself. Oh, right, that uh, treasure chest mimic guy has the uh, Luck Shard, too. Probably need to get myself one of those. Yeah, wasn't the Dragon Ball, like, one of the items in uh, Kirby Superstar and the Great Cave Offensive? Pretty sure you collected a Dragon Ball. I think I heard the name Vegito at some point, but I never actually saw it. I mean, honestly, pretty much everybody fused with- Oh, what do you know? There is black pepper here. Awesome. I kind of actually want to explore this area a bit more thoroughly now, looking for more treasure chests. Actually, that's right. I think I did see Vegito. He was, uh... They had to... Yeah, they had to fuse during the Majin Buu saga, I think, was it? Or no, that happened in GT. I can't remember. But yeah, I think I did see it, actually. Oh, cool. We got tons of black pepper now. Oh, and we got our Sinister Fang. Oh, we're getting all kinds of good stuff in the Sorcery Lab here. Actually, my, my understanding is that uh, Dragon Ball GT eventually became more like Dragon Ball Z, where it was all about uh, the main characters becoming absurdly powerful and fusing with each other and all the time. But I, I didn't... they never actually brought over enough of the series for it to get to that point. Also, I think there are treasure chests. Blue treasure chests on the train that we can get. Teps Ocius, that's that's the one. That's the one I'm using. The one that I like. Also, yeah, free HP's up, because why not? I already really like this idea to come on the train here. This was all worthwhile. I have no idea why that red chest is there. Oh yeah, I never did go back to redo the train. This is my, this is our first time doing all this. There we go. Let's take a break. Let's just, yeah, sit and gaze upon the waters here while we blab about DBZ or something? I don't know. That's actually one of the one one of the anime on my, you know, big list of anime I'd like to watch is, uh, yeah, actually finish up Dragon Ball GT someday. Card Captor Sakura too, man. That was, I think that might have been a big influence on my just disdain for watching like serialized anime. It's just you have to wait forever for them to resolve the story. I never did get to see the end of Dragon Ball GT or Card Car Card Captor Sakura because they didn't finish localizing them all by the time the network shut down. Or I don't know, maybe Teletoon is still around. I don't know. 
Well, they, they stopped airing all of that anime that I like on Fridays, so I stopped watching it. Just take a yeah, break to finish my coffee here. Hmm. Uh, that's a little bit spooky. Ah, whatever. Let's go to sleep. Ah! Jump scare! Uh, so yeah. This is the world's weirdest Easter egg right here. It's not even really an Easter egg because you need to kill this guy to get 100%. Get your bestiary filled out and get all the shards and everything. He's got kind of an important, useful one, too. This is your curse resist shard. And yeah, as far as I know, there's no faster way to make that guy appear. You've got to sit in the chair, wait like five minutes, and then that guy appears. And then you've got like, what, a 30% chance to get his shard. Where is he? There he is. Kunikun. Also, I didn't get to show it off, but uh, the gimmick with this guy is that if he looks at you, if you look at him, uh, or if you lock eyes with him, if he faces you and you face him, you immediately get cursed and take some damage. Yeah, 12% drop rate on that shard, and I didn't get his item either. I think his item drop is a good crafting material of some kind, too. <laughs> But yeah, it's going to take you a long time to farm that guy if you really want to. Ah, uh, so hey, I think we killed all of our bone, all of our birds with that one stone. We got our black pepper, we got to show off the Freaky train Slenderman thing. Oh, that's right. We want, uh, ooh, not pork cutlet, but that's a good rare drop. Uh, yeah, these flying pigs have something I want, too. The, uh, pig- flying pig meat. We need to get, like, four of those, I think. If I can find a good place to farm them. I think they're actually just in the hallway over here. Oh! Hello! Apparently I've, apparently I've just passed through here a million times without seeing that. I've already already eaten a fried egg. Huh. I need to find a good room to farm those guys. Here we go. What the hell? They're giving me a ton of their rarest drop. There we go. I want like four plume pork. That pork cutlet, I think, is one of the rarest drops in the game. I think it's only a 1% chance to get that. Plume pork, yeah, is a pretty common one. Yeah, we got all the plume pork we need already. Okay, what all can we make now? There's our apple risotto. Fucking finally. And I was pretty sure there was something good I could do with that pork. Oh, was it just the soy ramen? I thought there was some dish that gave me experience that I wanted. Or did I make it already?
I mean, I guess I might as well just make and eat all of this stuff. It's free stats. Oh, that's right. Vongoli sauce. That's right. Needed it for the von... No, the tonkotsu broth. Tonkotsu broth. Ah, I don't have the garlic. Right, that was what we were farming that for, though. Was And I need garlic for this one, too. Son of a bitch. Ah, polite to drink the soup. That's gotta be just ramen. There we go. Hey, soy ramen. I was wavering on whether to make that or not. You know, I can always just rebuy all of this stuff. I'll just, yeah, make all of it. Max MP is good to have. Um, do I want all this pork? Yeah, I've got pork meat to spare. K.O. Ken, that was like way back during the Saiyan saga, wasn't it? I mean, that's kind of the nature of the show, is that they learn ever more increasingly powerful special moves. And so, yeah, they never use the old ones anymore. Although, although the, I guess the Kamehameha is a mainstay, just because that's the one move they use so they can get the dramatic laser-locking battle. What did she want again? I think it was the soy ramen. And that one actually gave good stats, so I'm gonna buy one for myself. Honestly, I can't even remember what uh, K.O. Ken actually was. Because, yeah, I, I have not watched DBZ since I was a little kid. Or a little kid, I would have been like 13 or 14. Actually, no, I would have been more, more like 12 when I started watching it. Uh, what was this again? I think that's a Fornius fillet. Or was it Fish Hot Pot? No, Simmered Fornius. This is the one. God, how much food can this old lady put away? Ooh, Dainsliff. That's actually a good find. I think that's one of the better one-handed swords in the game. Beef hot pot. Did I make that? I don't think I did. Oh, right. This was the one that confused me. So it says... Yeah, it's beef hot pot. So it says beef hot pot. So it's like, okay, I'll go buy beef hot pot then. There, meat hot pot. Surely there's got to be beef in a meat hot pot. So yeah, give her a beef hot pot. But it's not the meat hot pot, it's something else entirely that doesn't even have hot pot in the name. That's right, it's the sukiyaki. Or is it? It might not be, actually. No, I think it is. I think that's the picture. I hope so, because I just used up a bunch of ingredients on that.
Christ, she's still going. There we go. This is the one. Recycle hat. This is the f the end of the food quest chain. And this is the thing that's maybe... Maybe, maybe gonna help us beat OD. Something, something life-changing. Well, none of this stuff is life-changing, so we can just eat all this. In fact, I'm almost positive that I haven't made that yet. What is life-changing? Whatever it is, I'm probably gonna have to... Ooh, that apple risotto actually gives me a fair bit of HP. Uh, so the idea is I'm actually going to finish uh, Bloodstained right here before we do that. And I guess, so it depends on how much, it, how long it's going to take for me to get strong enough to beat OD, because that's the last thing I'm doing on this save file. Uh, it depends on how long it takes us to find what this old lady wants, because I'm pretty sure we'll have a relatively easy time with OD once we get that recycle hat. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, we gotta fly... Okay, at least we got our black pepper. But yeah, we need to go farm some more flying beef. So that'll be the progression. We'll farm the flying beef. And then we'll craft ourselves an awesome gun. And then we'll beat the shit out of OD. And then we'll be done. I think there's, to, su to some extent, there's some benefit, I think, to being in a kind of low energy state, because it, let it lets you appreciate certain types of experiences that you might not be open to otherwise. Whoops. Lost my eyeball. Like, normally, I'm the kind of guy who likes to skip most cutscenes in most video games, unless I'm in the right mood where I just don't want to do anything other than watch a stupid video game cutscene. Um, I actually have no idea what affects your critical chance. I assume luck. Yeah, it's nothing on your stat sheet, because there is a ring. Yeah, there's the rings we've been getting. Yeah, they increase your critical rate, but they don't show anything on your stat sheet. So yeah, the critical... Whatever affects your critical rate must just be some hidden stat. You know what? I think it might be worth swapping out our luck equipment for attack strength equipment. Okay, only if and only if it can let us kill this guy in one hit, which it can't. Christ, I need two flying beef from this guy too. Well, I should have known that it would come to this in the end. Obviously, if we're going to want to farm to get the best things in the game, it would involve whacking this cow to get his flying beef for hours on end. Actually, I think I'm going to talk about the upcoming mystery anime game a little bit because, I don't know, maybe you guys know something about it that might help help me prepare or something. So, I played the original Valkyria Chronicles back when it was uh, first released on PS3. That was actually one of the things that incentivized me to upgrade to PS3 back in the day. It was, oh, Valkyria Chronicles. Looks like an awesome game. 
And then it, it, it must have done really well. Like, I know Valkyria Chronicles was a bestseller, but for some reason, uh, it was another one of those series that got ghettoized to portable platforms after that. So Valkyria Chronicles 2 was PSP only. And then, uh, yeah, Valkyria 3 never even came out in English. It was PSP only, and it was Jap Japan only. So I have no idea if the Valkyria Chronicles games are, like, in sequence. Like, are they standalone stories, or is there things I'm going to be missing when I play Valkyria Chronicles 4 from not being familiar with the other games in the series? For that is indeed the game I have decided on, is uh, Valkyria Chronicles 4. So yeah, I've played the first one, but not the second or third. We're jumping right into four, because that's the only. Those are the only two that you can get on Steam. Is uh, Valkyria Chronicles one and four. There it is. So there's all the beef we need. Okay, so nobody, so then nobody knows if I'm like missing out on anything by not knowing the plot of Valkyria two and three. Like, how does it even work? Is this just like, is it an actual sequel, like with the same nations and the same world and everything? And it's just like, oh, we're at war again with the same players and everything. Or is it gonna be like a new? Like a Final Fantasy type thing, where it's like a whole new universe with each game that just kind of keeps with the same themes and traditions of the old games. Uh, that was a lot of strength you get from that stake, so I'm gonna buy one of those for myself, too. Oh, it's different this time. That's how you become a great cook, is you make like 50 different dishes one time each. And then she dies. Actually, I don't, I don't think she actually dies. She just goes to bed and doesn't speak to you anymore. Uh, so yeah, 10 strength, that's kind of neat. Okay, so now we got the Recycle Hat, which lets us completely bypass the uh, main detriment of guns, which is their limited ammo. So now what I'd like to do is craft myself the best gun in the game, which might, need, might mean a little bit more farming yet. Okay, so I've got a Culver in. Our goal is to get Adrastia right here. Oof, which requires two Orichalcum and a Verathag? Verathragna, which I don't even have access to. Am I missing a weapon recipe? This could be a pain in the ass. Also, I need more gold. I never did find the gold I need, did I? Hmm. Well, it looks like, looks like there's more steps in our OD killing process here than I thought. So we need gold, and we need two Orichalcum, and I need whatever the fuck a uh, Verathragna is. Okay, that actually makes sense. So they're just... Yeah, because, you know, it's a whole war. So, yeah, you're just following a different group of people during the same war. Uh, so this is not fun. I still need that fucking gold. I also apparently need a recipe. Or can I craft that gun? Maybe that's why it didn't show up. So I need a Verathagna, whatever. 
No, I can't make that. So yeah, I don't have the recipe for this, so I need to... So this is the, these are the steps, then. I need gold to make this thing. I need the recipe to make... Uh, a Vera Thragna out of beetle juice, and then I need two Orichalcum to make this thing. Ravavelar? I actually know exactly where to go to farm these. Okay, we can do that first, because yeah, this won't take long. Those are all common drops from the Scissor Man enemy. The thing is, the, the reason I prefer guns myself, and particularly the homing gun, is because it means you can just put out damage constantly without even having to worry about getting in close to him. So it's safer to use the gun. You do get better DPS with the Rava, whatever, though. But yeah, we can use the, we can certainly try this as a first step, and then if I still can't beat him, we'll go for the gun. Uh, I think we're too high up. I think it's earlier on. Somewhere earlier in the cathedral, you've got a hallway full of scissor men. Or maybe it's further this way. Maybe it's this hallway right here. Yeah, let's go let's go further right. So the reason I don't like guns in this game is because of the limited ammunition. Once you get your recycle hat. Oh, so yeah, the problem with guns is that they have low attack speed. Uh, but you can fix that by getting Gun Mastery ranked up, which is pretty easy. And then the other problem is they do shit for damage unless you put on a uh, bullet to go with them. So yeah, your infinite rounds here. We'll actually just show this off. Yeah, so this is garbage. Look how many bullets it takes. But then you actually put on some good ammunition. And we're actually piercing stuff and doing tons of damage and all that. Two shots. We're doubling our damage output. Hell, quadrupling our damage output, basically, by putting on the ammo. But if you keep using it, then you'll just run out, because I've only got, yeah, like 20 rounds. Now, if I put on the hat here, our new recycle hat, this is infinite ammo. This is made out of, the, out of the same material as Solid Snake's headband. So now that I got this hat, I can just sp spam AP rounds all day and shoot the shit out of everything without having to worry about ammo, which is incredible. Now, the best gun in the game actually shoots homing shots, so I don't even need to aim the thing or get in front of the enemy to use it, which is even more ridiculously amazing, and it does tons of damage, too. And the best bullets in the game are diamond bullets, which uh, do way, way more damage than anything else. The problem with them is that they're super rare and difficult to craft. You gotta... I think you gotta make, like... It's like diamonds and two other gems to make diamond bullets. But if you don't have to care about ammo, then you just make one diamond bullet, and then you've got, yeah... Homing bullets that do, like, 500 damage each. So then the idea is we just get our homing bullets and we just jump up and stay in the air for the whole fight. And then just, yeah, OD can't touch us and we just shoot homing bullets at him forever. That's the, that's the ideal setup. But we gotta farm a bunch of things in order to get to that point. We got the recycle hat, which I thought would be the end of it, but... It's a multi-step process to get that far. Zelda 64 maps in Warcraft 3? I have never, never heard of such a thing, but that does sound really fun. Yeah, so Razor is an extremely common drop from this guy. Uh, like, maybe the... 
I mean, I got, I got two theories as far as what it might have had to do with Zelda. It could have been that either the items were named after Zelda things, or it could be that it was just clickbait to get people to download their, uh, their map. Yeah, just name your map after a popular thing, and people will click on it and download it. And then, you know, you got a foot in the door at that point. Oh, that could be it, too. Like, that's his name, is Zelda64. You know what? I don't care what these other guys have for drops. Also, I think this might go a little bit faster if I, uh... Put on a dagger. Eh, maybe not. Eh, maybe. Is that four? Okay, that's definitely four now. You know, honestly, the guns might be the way to go already. Because then we can just shoot OD without even getting close to him. See, I, I remember the uh, the Gundam custom maps from StarCraft back in the day. Those That was one of my favorite setups. And it was kind of Gundam themed because the characters would be named after Gundam pi pilots and it was... Uh, yeah, had a Gundam theme in that way. The whole idea was you'd have one team, and it was also based around the po concept of, yeah, everything being ridiculously overpowered. Oh, the Rava Velar? Uh, yeah, if you know what the Chris A. Grimm was in the original Symphony of the Night, it is basically the same thing as that. I actually have one of these on my main save file. It is indeed pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, low attack power, shitty weapon, right? But it swings like four times every time you swing it, and it stacks, and it's cool. And the awesome thing about it is that it does, unlike every other weapon in the game, it doesn't halt, it doesn't lock you in place for using it. You can just run around with your, yeah, your scissor blades going all over the place. So if you just want to do like I've kind of been doing so far and just run around the castle hacking just hacking and slashing things and picking up item bags this is probably the weapon you want uh, so yeah it's pretty fun it's actually probably the strongest weapon in the game in terms of DPS I just still prefer guns, because with the guns you don't have to get in close, you can just stand back and plink away. So okay, we can try this out. Also, I don't know if Sword Mastery actually changes the damage output of these things at all. So I'll probably still want to go back and farm, like, resistances and stuff, but we'll see if this Rava Baral here helps us at all. Or no, Rava Veral. Velar. Baral was the tier 1 version. Oh yeah, we gotta go to the library and take out the book first. Before we do that, though, I might as well farm that in obsidian. Because if we end up not being able to beat him here, then I'll just have to go out, return the book, and then come back here. So let's just get all the farming done that we need to Well, OD is out of the way. Oh yeah, you can see you can see how much better DPS this is than the Durandil, because we can actually kill this guy before he throws his axe this time.
Also, my eyeball's gone again. And there's our two Aura Chalcum. I think I might farm a few more just in case I want to make some other weapons. In fact, that other gun that I don't know what the materials are yet might need, like, one Aura Chalcum, so we'll just farm one more. Also, I think this guy has some other rare drop that I haven't seen yet. The cool thing, too, is uh, the, the awesome thing about this sword is that since it does such rapid attacks... Uh, it's, that'll amplify the effect of any attack upgrades you can get. So, if, like, let's try and show this off. Yeah, sure, I'll put this on and we'll swap out Durandal for Rava, whatever. Yeah, so instead of... So now we've gained 20 damage from putting this on, but we're doing, like, four attacks per swing. So yeah, it just basically increases the effectiveness of your damage up effects. But we lose our luck equipment by putting that on, so we'll go back to this. I also want to get the high tier version of the Flying Edge at some point. It's a fun weapon, but it's got weak stats. That's the Flying Edge. You can get double hits if you time it right. Oh, come on. He dropped the first two so easily, and now he doesn't want to give up the last one. There it is. Uh, you've got to mash it. So yeah, it looks like every time you press it, you get four slices, it looks like. Which is actually better than the Chris A. Grimm. Chris A. Grimm was only three in Symphony of the Night. I mean, if you have a turbo controller, you could uh, hold down the button, I guess. Uh, this is actually the wrong way. I wanted to go to the library. Well, this certainly ended up being more than three hours to finish off this game. Actually, no, it didn't. I haven't been playing for as long as I thought. Oh yeah, also we have no use for luck during this fight, so we'll go Conquest. We'll go Strength, and what else? Probably Ice Resist. Ooh, or how about attack speed? I don't know if that even affects the Rava Velar at all. Let's have a look. Can't tell. Maybe? But not by much. I have not had the chance to try Espresso yet. I've been tempted from time to time, but the thing is I've still got tons of free medium coffee cards to use up. So it's like, eh, do I want to spend whatever or do I want free coffee? And every time I've been to McDonald's lately, I've gone with free coffee. Yeah, it looks like the attack speed's not doing much for us. Probably take the fire resist, actually, because that's the one that I don't know how to avoid just yet.
Also, since this is the safe point we'll be going from, I might as well get kitted out for the fight. Pretty much I want anything that's going to increase my attack to maximum. Ooh, looks like the silver power ring is the one. Yeah, I don't care about attack speed anymore anyways. Yep, looks like we're to the point where silver power is better than anything. If I can find it. There we go. Is it better than Traverser's ring, though? Not yet. Is Optimizer the one we want? Also, I probably want the book guy, just because he'll buff up my attack even further. Accelerator's good for dodging stuff. What do I want for circle? Probably blood steel. Nah, it's not going to help that much, but it'll, it'll help a little. Actually, no, it won't help much at all unless I rank it up. We'll just stay with Draconic Rage. Okay, let's see if this goes any better. If this doesn't work out for us, I'm going to try uh, try using that gun with the armor-piercing bullets, and if that doesn't work, we'll go farm some stuff. Fuck you. Oh, do I not have... No, I've got Dimension Shift. It just didn't come out for some reason. Ah, uh, so that's pretty good. Yeah, more of that, please. You know what's also a good idea for this fight? Some healing items. Okay, let's not fuck this up this time. Fuck's sake. Oh, actually, I do have a bunch of food. Maybe I should just try to avoid him as much as possible until and just wait for him to do that crappy spinning sword. Well, shit, that was super easy. Yeah, we, the thing is, is we were putting out ridiculous amounts of damage there. Also, I kind of cheated with the food, but uh, yeah, that was the optional super boss. Let's go claim our rewards. So then the question is, now that OD is dead, what happens to the library? Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's a vampire. He just, yeah, puts on his little... Carrot nose, mustache, glasses, and he's fine. 
Hooray, we get to pillage the shelves. Ah, uh, so yeah, now you get to take out all the library books at once. Uh, which is, yeah, great for just farming stuff and being invincible and having all of the stats. But now that we've killed OD, there's not really anything else in the game to use all of our new powers on. Also, yeah, we've got both Tailwind abilities now, so we can move crazy fast. Oh, yeah, we beat him. Yeah, it turns out that, yeah, Rava Velar does absurd amounts of damage when you jack up your strength like that. So, yeah, it, it literally took, yeah, about the time that it takes to go to the bathroom. He did not last very long at all. I had to scarf down some fish fingers, but, uh, yeah, that was all that it took. Ah, uh, so yeah, that's everything on hard mode, or at least all the bosses. We got the... I think we got the bestiary filled out. Yeah, we have killed every enemy in the game. And that is good enough for me. So now my my hard save file is basically in the same stage as my normal one. Where, yeah, there's nothing else for me to do but just wander around farming things, getting the percentages maxed out. Which I don't think I'm going to do much of on stream here, necessarily. Uh, yeah, that'll be more of a on-my-own-time listening to podcasts type thing. Uh, so, yes. Uh, I don't know, is it that time yet? It isn't, no. I was thinking, like, oh, maybe we'll go do a supper break before Valkyria Chronicles 4. But no, I got lots of time before I need to go find food and that kind of nonsense, although I will remember to change the now playing game. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, what do we call this? There we go. This will be the dumb anime stream of chronicling Valkyries. I know it's Valkyria. Oh, oh. Uh, Twitch does not. Has it been saying on Twitch that I've been playing Tales of Majael this whole time? Because that's what it shows on multi-stream. But on Twitch it says Bloodstained. Yeah, Twitch is correct. As as usual, restream is just fucked in so many ways. There we go, so we are now the dumb anime stream of Chronicling Valkyries. Get Steam loaded up here. So I did it, I, I installed this game and played it a little bit last night, just through like the first tutorial mission, just to make sure that it worked and that I could play it on my computer and all of that, but I have not, uh, got it set up for streaming just yet. It seems like an extremely solid PC port for what it's worth. You've got a very wide array of options, uh, including borderless window. To, I can alt tab out of it and click outside the window very neatly. Uh, it seems to be a bit noisy. 